Hello everyone. Today we're making homemade laundry detergent. Now, <clears throat> this is my homemade soap, and it's in uh, its mold. Now, I'm going to do how to make it from scratch um, with the different ingredients with the food processor first. And then, if you want to continue watching, you can see how I made this soap right here step by step, including the recipe, after we've watched how to put it together. And that way, for those people who already know how to make homemade soap uh, for a recipe for um, homemade laundry detergent, then they don't have to watch the last part of this video. Um, we're going to be working. Um, <clears throat> we're going to be working with essential depots, uh, essential oils, and fragrant oils today. Um, <clears throat> but uh, and we're going to be working with borax, 20 mule team borax. It's usually on the bottom shelf at Walmart. It's usually around three dollars and something. And this will go through many batches. All right. And then this is. Uh, your Arm & Hammer Super Washing Soda, and that's different than Arm & Hammer Baking Soda, which is in an oranger box, and they're usually side-by-side -side, uh, there in the laundry department um, of your local Walmart, but you want the Super Washing Soda. All right. Now, often I add um, OxyClean. And I'm out of OxyClean, but I'm needing detergent. So I'm going to go ahead and make this detergent without the OxyClean, but I'm going to tell you how much I put in in case you want to do it with the OxyClean. And you can buy the OxyClean um, at Walmart, and they have the no ammonia, no fragrance, I think no bleach uh, formula, or you can go to the Dollar Tree and spend a dollar for the regular off-brand. It's a little bit smaller container, but it's only a dollar and um, it's a great deal if fragrances and ammonias and things of that sort is not bought it's not gonna be an issue with you all right now this is felt's napta and I never really know if I pronounce it exactly right <laughs> okay you can buy that usually for a dollar at Walmart and if you don't want to make your own soap for this recipe you can go down and buy this this is a detergent and we wash our clothes with detergents, but we shouldn't wash our skin with detergent. And so I make a lot of homemade soap uh, that you know because it's detergent free and it's much better for your skin. Um, so I make homemade soap. So I make homemade soap for this recipe, and it comes out even cheaper. But um, if you don't want to make your own homemade soap for this recipe, um, you can purchase one of those. And every time that I would put a segment of this soap into the mix, you would put a bar of this soap into the mix. So it will cost you a little bit more, I believe, but it's, you know, you can buy it. Uh, of course, this will have fragrance in it, I'm sure, and it has deter and it's got all kinds of names. Um, it's got this long list of things. Um, this woman does a, does, a, does a video about what's in this, and uh, it took her an hour. Um, so, back to the recipe. Um, if you want to continue watching, you can see what I put in this soap and how I got it in this uh, mold. Um, this is just a baking dish, and I'm now going to just pull this off. And this recipe is not designed for washing the skin. Uh, this would be more similar to what you might uh, compare to Grandma's last soap a uh, really, really long time ago when all they did was put oils and lye um, in a pot and they didn't do that much figuring. And so there was a, it was usually a low super fat recipe because they put enough lye in there to turn all that oil into soap. Um, and so therefore, 
when we make soap today, we super fat it so that there's some oils in the, in the soap that doesn't get turned in the soap. So that way it's very moisturizing, creamy, all those kind of wonderful words that means it's awesome for your skin. Uh, but this soap is not super fatted. Uh, so therefore, it, uh, uh, sorry, my nose is, my nose is itching. Somebody's talking about me somewhere. Um, so anyway, so this, um, this soap is not super fatted, but this same recipe can be super fatted and used, um, to wash yourself with. And it is much better than using detergents. You just don't realize the damage that detergents does to your skin. And we're all using these body washes and they put the word soap on some of our bars, but there's no soap in there. Uh, it's all detergent and I tell people, you know, we wash our dishes with detergent. So get out of the dishwasher and buy some real soap and take a bath and feel the difference. Um, so <clears throat> we will get off my soapbox. I'm going to move this out of the way and show you what we're going to do with this. Now I'm always buying up um, ooh, used um, food processors uh, to keep uh, on hand for just doing projects like this. This food processor does not get used for food. Um, this food processor only gets used uh, for chemicals such as this. And this is a new one I got and it has this new lock-in system. I got it for three dollars because the handle was broken. Doesn't bother me a bit. <laughs> um, but I was at an estate sale and um, this lady was moving. I take that back. It was a moving sale. And uh, and then I'm going to just take this sh plastic shoe box from Walmart. And I'm going to put my crumbs in there. And I'll get that out of the way. And if you're making homemade soap for yourself, you can mold it just like this. And then just cut it into uh, bars on a cutting board with a knife and um, you're good to go. I mean, you know, later on after you get better at it, you can, you can um, find a more even, prettier way to cut your soap, but this is a good start. And let's see. Because this soap is not super fatted, it's a little bit harder to cut. And if you don't have it, if you don't have a food processor, you can attempt to use a blender. All right, so that's three batches. Four batches. Five batches. And six batches. So this is six batches of laundry detergent. And on this laundry detergent, uh, I'm going to do one of these batches up for the camera, and so we'll sit these over here. And, and that's roughly about the same size. Okay, and now I'm going to turn this on, which will be loud, so hold your ears. Okay, now get any little piece.
pieces of soap noodles. We call these soap noodles. Okay, now we won't need the greater one uh, now. Now we're going to need this one. So, put this back on. And uh, now we are going to uh, do our ingredients. And this stuff clumps up real bad. And you gotta bang it. Ah! See? <laughs> okay. Okay, that's roughly one cup. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, when you're putting your ingredients into your food processor, if your food processor has one of these little open tops, I put something over the top and then dump it in, and that way powder don't go down through there. Okay. And then we're going to put one cup of the super washing soda. Okay, and then we'll put some of our soap noodles. And I'm still using the thing so that I can drop more in. Oh, wrong lid. And we're going to turn it out. Some more of our soap noodles. If you put them all in at the same time, um, sometimes it, it bucks on you. tell you why it's doing that. Sometimes the blade will pack it uh, at the bottom and um, when that happens, at least on mine, and I'm sure that'll happen on yours, um, you have to uh, you have to dump some out. See how it's attached to the bottom? And that causes the blade to get lifted up. And so, if that happens to you, you just do that. And put your blade back in. 
and then I refeed my food processor. all your soap no noodles chopped up good then you wouldn't have to refeed it but um, uh, the, I hadn't got all the soap noodles in mainly because I was talking you'd prefer instead of doing it the way I showed you. I might just put this right here and dump some in right from the get-go. Okay, um, let's say here's your laundry detergent and you want to add essential oils or fragrant oils to your detergent, um, then this is how you do it. And about 20 drops um, is a good ratio and then you can learn from experience whether you want more or not. And here is some of the choices that I thought uh, you might like. There is jasmine fragrant oil, very exotic and floral, uh, French vanilla, and I thought jasmine and French vanilla would be really nice together, or uh, French vanilla and strawberry, or just strawberry. Um, and then they have fruit fantasia, that sounds fun. And those are exactly that. They're fun. But then we have some uh, ad some ideas that could be beneficial in other ways. Okay, let's think about tea tree. Tea tree is an antifungal, antibacterial. So if you want to add antibacterialness to your detergent, you could add tea tree essential oil. All right, because this uh, essential oil is different from fragrant oil, and this fragrant oil is alcohol-free here at Essential Depot, but um, or there at Essential Depot. <laughs> uh, but at the tea tree um, is a uh, is distilled tree. It's tea. T e a is the name of the tree, and it comes from Australia. 
uh, and some other areas, but it's a dig, uh, predominantly, I believe, it all started in Australia in the outback somewhere. All right, and then there is lemon. Lemon is very cleansing, so that increases your um, cleansing factor, and plus it smells awesome. Um, and then there is lemongrass and lavender. Lemongrass has a very herbally lemony smell. It does not have the citrusy smell of um, the citrusy cleansing so much effect as the lemon, but it has a wonderful smell, and it's very spirit lifting. So, you know, when you put your clothes off, and then there's lavender. Lavender is very, very wonderful for like migraines, and it's it's a, it's a mood lift, mood alter. It's calming, and everybody loves lavender. And so lavender is a wonderful choice. And for me, I don't have to worry about allergic reactions. So what I'm gonna do is I this one's for me, um, and so I'm going to add lemon lemon um so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifty sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty give or take and if i wasn't out of tea tree i would put some tea tree in there <laughs> but i ran out yesterday making soap so so much for that and then I'm just going to stir that up. And you can do this in your food processor as well. Um, unless you're going to make unscented too. And if you're going to make unscented too, then, um, you know, like for, I'm fixing to make some for my daughter for her baby's diapers, uh, cloth diapers. And you can't use essential oils um, or fragrant oils with cloth diapers because it um, puts up an old, uh, puts up a barrier uh, that causes them not to absorb moisture as well and uh, with any kind you know when you add a little oil to something so I'm putting lemon in mine heavenly all right but now there's nothing that says you can't put a little bit of essential oil and some fragrance so what about lemon and fruit fantasia I mean that sounds good or lemon and uh, strawberry so there's no reason why you can't put both but when you go with essential oils you can get some extra benefits and that's good now one lady asked me how many loads am I going to get out of this because you've got five point you've got around five ounces of lye um, 13 ounces of water and the recipe is in the description under the video um, oh wrong thing Uh, you've got 13 ounces of coconut oil, 13 ounces of lard, uh, 8 ounces of soybean oil, which is basically vegetable oil, and that's explained further down. Um, and you, um, in this soap, and then a cup of this and a cup of that, uh, with a little bit of essential oil, so you don't have very much. And you will sometimes see little black particles, because borax is a naturally mined, uh, uh, mined ingredient, you know, we mine salt and we mine borax. Uh, so sometimes you'll have little odd sh uh, colored ingredients in there. And so uh, let's see. One, oh, you only use two tablespoons. Two, three, four. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 
19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, no Randy, camera's running, 27, 28, 29, Roughly 30 loads, unless I miscounted and I'm, you know, I got distracted there once. Um, so, roughly 30 loads in here. If you put a third of a cup, which that's a fourth, but if you put, oh, and that's a half, but if you put a third of a cup of OxyClean in here, which is what it calls for, a third of a cup of OxyClean, then you're going to get maybe 32, 34, 36 loads um, out of here. And you only use two tablespoons. Always you want to keep a real, a real tablespoon measurer, not a tablespoon from the drawer. And you just always um, uh, take it and shake. And I've put it on top of my clothes and I've never had an issue uh, when I forgot. But predominantly I stick it in the bottom, turn on the water, swish it, swish my hand under the spray, and then I chop my clothes in. I've never had one issue with cold or hot water, and I predominantly wash in cold uh, with it um, uh, sticking in my clothes or not dissolving. And it, it, it looks just like regular powder detergent, but it's highly concentrated. And um, so if you're going to get 36 loads out of that, and I haven't done the math on how much that costs, but it's just not that much. Um, so this is how we make our laundry detergent. Now, uh, for the baby's diapers or children's clothes, you might not want to put the OxyClean in there. I'm fixing to do uh, the rest of these batches up, and I'm going to do up several of them um, that don't have any scent to them uh, at all because it's for my daughter to wash her children's clothes with. And so this is a wonderful recipe for, uh, for baby's diapers and baby's clothes. All right, so um, now if you continue watching, you will see how I made the, the soap component from scratch. So just stay with me. But otherwise, um, if you look in the description, you will see I'm an affiliate for Essential Depot. And you can be an affiliate too if you like. If you have, if you do YouTube videos and people would click on the link in your description, or if you have a website that you could put your link on, um, um, then you can be an affiliate too. And basically, it just helps me out when you click on the link before you purchase. And when you click on the link, it adds a cookie uh, which uh, to their shopping cart. And then as long as you purchase while you're there, I get a few pennies for everything you buy. And that really helps me out with my soaping. And I thank you in advance. And then please hit the like button and share this video on Facebook if you think it's worthy. And uh, please subscribe and I love your comments. And um, I try to do my videos just real real and down to earth and, um, and personal. And so uh, I hope you have enjoyed that factor as well. Bye YouTube. Keep watching now and you can see how I make this homemade soap. Okay, today I'm using 8 ounces of a vegetable oil, which if you look on the back of your vegetable oil to your ingredients, most vegetable oils are 100% soybean oil. If it has any other thing listed under ingredients, don't use it. You can't afford it because you don't know what percentages it is of each oil. Uh, only if it says soybean oil, and that's the only thing it says for ingredients. Uh, and we're using 8 ounces of that today. Oh, I got 
and that happens to the best of us. You just have to keep, oh, I did it perfect that time. And I got this, uh, it's just an off-brand uh, soybean oil that I got at um, a discount grocery store. And that's the way to go, I think, with the soybean oil. And look at there, now it keeps changing its mind. <laughs> it was said 7.9 and then it went back up to 8. But there it does it again. Maybe it's like on the cusp. Let's give it just a, a drop more. Now it's going to go back from 8 to 8.1. No, now it's just going to shut off. <laughs> don't you just hate these new scales that don't have a cord? i got to order one with a cord. And I highly recommend for everybody out there to buy a scale that has a cord. But mine died and I had to run to Walmart and get me one because I had to make soap people had ordered. And I had to make it for them. They were buying special loaves. So um, when you're measuring... I mean, when you're buying a scale and you have time to order it, make sure you get one that's got electrical cord so that it doesn't go off when it takes a mind. All right, and now we're doing 13 ounces of coconut oil. That may be too much. Yeah, got to get a little bit of that out. Almost. 12.8. 13. All right. 13 ounces of coconut oil. All right. Now we're going to do 13 ounces of lard. And we're doing a 5%, a 0%, um, a 0% um, super fat on this recipe. And so, 100% of this lard will be turned into soap. So, there'd be no lard residue left in this soap. So, if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, uh, only by choice of health, um, not because you're concerned about the endangerment of animals um, or the harm to animals, then, you know, uh, uh, this right here, 100% of this lard is going to be turned into soap. Um, and you, it's the same as if you were to wear leather shoes or uh, use leather products or animal products on your skin. And when it comes to wearing leather jackets and things of that sort. But if you're a vegan or vegetarian, because of the harmfulness to uh, animals in the killing of animals, then this would not be the recipe for you. And uh, you can purchase uh, smaller quantities of coconut oil from Essential Depot, and I highly recommend those. And then also you can buy their um, olive oil pomace grade, which is the olive oil that is squeezed from the seeds. It is the only olive oil, in my opinion, that makes good soap. And so uh, I'll have a recipe in the bottom of this video. Um, use it one recipe with the lard and one recipe with the olive oil. But still, 100% of this olive oil will be turned into. Okay, now we are going to measure our water and our lye. And I use these tall containers that I find at the Dollar General, um, Walmart, and the Dollar Tree. You want the thicker plastic um, than that little thin flimsy stuff because I fear the thin flimsy ones would, the light water would melt them. Okay. And you want to put that on your scale and turn on the scale. <clears throat> and that automatically zeroes it out because it was on there before I turned it on. And we're going to use 13.3. Oh, and I went over. I always do. I always have to work with it. Oh, 13.4. I'll go under now. 13.13. 13. Let's do a little bit. A little bit more. Oh, I went over again. And this is normal. Don't freak out about it. I'm back to 13.1. I need to use a measure, a little dropper or something. Oh, 13.2. 13.2. 13 13.3! 13 Yay! All right. Um, 
Now I'm going to use my stainless steel and it's very very important that you use stainless steel when working with lye and this is my stainless steel whisk and because the water is way down here I can just whisk away and don't fear of the water splashing up at me. You just want to ensure that you have it on a, in a, on a stable surface before you stir. Now, well, where's my gloves, y'all? My gloves are hiding. My, my daughter has... My daughter was cleaning up in here for me. Oh, no. And she's... Cl my gloves are missing, y'all. Okay, never do this without gloves. Always wear your eye protection. Um, first time soper should always wear shoes. Well, any time soper. Shoes, long pants, and long sleeves, especially when you're new to soaping. Okay, and I'm not wearing my gloves because they're gone. I have two sets in here, and they're bright yellow. They stick out like everything. So, oh, there they are. There they are. Oh. I thought I was going to have to do uh, mix it up without my gloves on. Then I was going to get tons of emails about what a bad girl I was. So, and there is something all over these gloves. I'm going to put them on and then I'll dust my hands. That's why they weren't put away. But there's another pair around here somewhere. My daughter was cleaning up in my soap room for me. And she, these were under my moles. Okay, so now... Um, this is, I found this at the Dollar Tree, and I was just at the Dollar Tree in Fort Payne, Alabama a few weeks ago, and they had these again. Hear that little crystal sound? I mean, this is not your rubbery, white kind of plastic, and, and for some reason, this doesn't do static electricity as bad, um, this clear practice, and this is a, a Betty, Betty Crocker mixing cup, and it has a good handle on it, um, you know, with gloves, it's hard to put your fingers through that little hole, so anyway, so, I highly recommend something that doesn't do static, um, and now we're going to use Essential Depot's Lye. They have awesome lye at awesome great prices, and I use the food grade. I just love the food grade. Uh, when you're selling your soap, you can say, we use food grade lye, not technical grade like they make Drano with. All right, now I'm going to turn that on. That zeroed out my bowl, and I'm going to do 5.5. Okay, but now this is 5.5, but I want to show you how to put some back. Let's say you go over. Well, you don't want to do this right here because this right here is just going to get lye everywhere. And by the way, this container has to be dry. Uh, never use a container you've just washed. Always use a container that is bone dry. If you have a little bitty spoon that will fit into your container, then you can return the lye safely and nobody gets hurt. So, uh, that's how I recommend that you return your lye to the bottle. And always close the lid. And this needs to stay on a high shelf or a locked cabinet, never on a lower shelf that somebody could get into it. Children cannot read the word poison sometimes. Um, so, you want to make sure that, that this is in a safe place that children and people d that don't understand what this is, because, I mean... It don't look that dangerous if you just look at the bottle. Oh, well, there's a big, you know, corrosive sign. But still, um, somebody might, you know, take off the lid and sniff it to see what it is. So you got to keep this safe and keep it uh, well away from children and persons who wouldn't know what it is. All right. Now we're going to mix our lye with our water. And another reason I love this container is because I can do this. It is smaller than my pot. And then I can take a firm grip here. And I know without a shadow of a doubt 
that it is well mixed and I don't have to worry about splashing because it's way down here at the bottom in this tall skinny container and then always have something to sit your whisk on because that's going to be dripping lye water. As soon as you're finished with it, take it to the sink and, rinse, and rinse, with, rinse it well. Um, so now you can see our lye water. It looks all cloudy and there's all kinds of wonderful fumes coming up from it. And so we're going to step back away from that and not breathe them. Um, if you are doing this in your kitchen or if you have a stove that vents outside, not all vents on stove tops vent outside so if your stove top vents outside then you can do that and just put it uh, put it on top of your stove and let the stove vent pull out the fumes um, if you're going to take this outside a lot of people recommend doing this outside but I've got dogs and they like to bump you and come up on you and, and you know you can I've got some little ones I could trip over them I might end up with Lyle over me and my dogs and besides that you know, where to put it out there, well, then they're going to want to jump up and sniff at it and see what it is, and they might knock it over. And you might live in a residential area where there'd be people around, children possibly coming to your yard, people that wouldn't know what's in this container. Even if you put a skull and crossbones on it, small children don't know what that means, and children will... The day you say that children never come into your yard, that's the day a child will come into your yard and grab your lie bucket and flip it over on their head. So... Uh, I don't like to do it outside for that reason. If you live out in the middle of nowhere and you don't have nothing that could bump it or you have an outbuilding somewhere where you can safely uh, close the door and ensure that it's not going to get flipped over by somebody or dogs and dogs aren't going to trip you on the way there or back and forth, um, I'd say do it outside. Um, roll up, Pull up a window uh, right where it is. Uh, there's a window above where this is uh, venting this mo at the moment outside. So... Um, so anyway, because there's there's a window right behind here, and um, so uh, find a, a way. But basically, um, you just don't want to breathe those fumes. Okay, now we've got to let our lye cool down and our oils cool down. We'll talk about that next. All right, my daughter has helped me so much that she has put away my candy thermometer after she cleaned it, but I don't know where she put it. <laughs> so. I have found a oven thermometer like you use for meat, and I'm going to try to make do with that. So, first thing I'm going to do is check the temperature of my oils. And you don't want to touch the bottom of the crock pot with the metal piece. You just want it into the oils. And I'm just waiting for it to, for the needle to stop turning. Okay, so we've got a good a good temperature on that. The oils are right at 120. Uh, you want your oils to be within 100 to 130, no more. You can have less. But you don't want more than a 30, 30 degree difference between your oil and your lye. Um, if you're doing goat's milk soap, which I've got several recipes, uh, several times where I'm making it online, um, you will see there's a difference in that, but in regular hot process soap, no dairy. All right, now I'm just going to drop that down in there um, because uh, it's not quite as long as my other one, so it's um, it's getting submerged just a little. So let me see if I can reassert it. No, my other one you can just drop it down in there because. It, uh, it just fits perfect, but it's a candy thermometer, and this is for meat in the oven. And um, our lye is still too hot, so we have got to wait uh, on our lye, and I've got this little container of water that I can just drop that right down in. It cools the thermometer and also prevents me from getting lye water on anything. And then I would always flush this... Um, in the sink once I'm finished really good. All right, so we'll come back and test our water and our lye again. And our lye, we want it to be from 100 to 110. Uh, so lye, 100 to 110. Lye water, I mean our oil, from 100 to 130. All right, in this pot, I'm making homemade laundry detergent for the house. 
um, for my own personal use. And I have in this pot 8 ounces of soybean. I have 13 ounces of 13 ounces of coconut oil and 13 ounces of lard. And this is our lye water. is great for children or for um, for cloth diapers uh, there'll be no essential oils and no super fats in the soap it's a zero a zero fat um, soap <laughs> And we need to turn the crock pot on low now. Alrighty. Now let my... Uh, let my stick blender rest a little bit and then I'll keep going until I bring it to trace. Whoop! I see I'm trying to give y'all a headache. <laughs> my glove got, a, got into the thing. There we go. All right, so we'll put the lid on that one. Now this crock pot gets too hot. Now, if you've watched my videos before, you know what I'm gonna say, but I gotta say it for those new people that's never watched it before. Um, some crock pots just get too hot. And if you notice that soap sticks to the side in the latter stages and, and you take a really nice scraper and you can't scrape it off and your soap gets Vaseline stage really fast and during this stage it boils over easy and by the way if your soap boils over just scrape it all up and throw it back in the pot and turn the pot off for 10 minutes um, what you need to do is your crock pot gets too hot so you need to turn it on for 10 minutes and then turn it off for 10 minutes turn it on for 10 minutes and then turn it off for 10 minutes All right, now that's what Trace looks like. See how when I dump that up, it just piled up in a little pile. And you can jiggle it, but that little pile stays there. So that means it's ready to go. And so I'm going to put the lid on this crock pot. Oh. I think I let it rest a little bit too long. had a phone call. Alright, now it's already hit the firm stage, so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to make my lines in it and dig me a hole and that should take care of it. So if that ever happens to you, that you get sidetracked and your soap hits trace and gets extra firm on you before you even realize it, go ahead and try to blend it once. And there you go. We got it on low. We'll see how it comes out. Okay. Let me hone in there a little bit. Okay. 
This is our recipe for uh, laundry detergent. And see how easy the soap is coming off the sides of the crock pot? It's just coming right off. <clears throat> and with it coming off like that real easy, when I scrape across it, that means that my crock pot has not been allowed to get too hot. You can see how it just comes right off. And it tells me that um, I have not dehydrated my soap by overcooking it. All right. Now, let me get my scraper. Scrape down the sides. All right. That's got about at least another hour that it needs to cook. It's still in the white foamy uh, stages. Okay, this is our laundry detergent. And this is just a glass baking dish. And this is a poly mailer. Um, I talk about these. Um, you get them from eBay or where I buy them. And they're great for shipping. Um, they're great for lining soap molds. And so I'm just going to sit the bowl, and you can see there's plenty of excess on both sides. And I'm just going to set the bowl in it instead of fooling with um, wax paper. And this is all going to be just ground up anyway and used for um, laundry detergent. So... And there's no colorants, no super fat. It's a zero, a zero, um, zero recipe when it comes to um, super fats. When you make the recipe in the on the soap cow, which I'll have a recipe here for you. <clears throat> I did add steric acid to this one, but you don't have to add steric acid. Steric acid is not needed for this. Um, but I, one of the soaps that I was planning to make, I didn't have enough tea tree to make it, so I thought, well, let's just do laundry detergent. I've been needing to make laundry detergent forever, and so that's what I'm going to do. So I had already put the steric acid in it, but there was just no need for that, Steric acid just makes a bar harder so that it lasts longer, but we're going to grind this up and we want it to melt easily in our detergent, but it's not going to hurt anything if you ever have this happen to you. So I thought, well, this is a good time to make another laundry detergent recipe. Excuse me getting in the way of the camera, y'all. Girls, a sofa's got to do what a sofa's got to do. I had to get all the little, all the residue out of the bottom, and and I'm gonna just push this around. And tomorrow, it doesn't matter what it looks like, because tomorrow I'm just gonna take and put it in the food processor and chop it up into little pieces, and then um, add the ingredients for the laundry detergent. And every little bit and piece that um, goes in there, if you know, like this little extra lump and stuff I got here on the side, I don't have to worry about pushing that down. I mean, I did it so you could see, but tomorrow I'm going to just throw everything in the food processor. And so now I'm going to take another bag. And I'm going to put this in that bag. And uh, I'm not going to like seal it, seal it down real hard. I'm just going to leave it like that so it can breathe a little. And uh, that will make happier soap because it uh, can germinate its wonderfulness inside there. <laughs> and tomorrow we'll cut that up and make laundry soap. Stay with me.